All right, everyone. I thought we'd try something different today, which is to go on a field trip, except that we're not going to actually go anywhere or do anything. What I wanted to do is show you a real-life example of particle-in-a-box phenomenon, in, in this case, semiconductor quantum dots. Here you see some uh, models that these, you know, these are drawn on a computer. But what these are are uh, basically just large clusters, a couple hundred atoms big, a couple of thousand atoms in some cases, maybe even up to a million atoms of just semiconductor particles. Uh, you can image these in electron microscope, so you can see that here. And you can see why we call these quantum dots, is because they're round. And they're round for the same reason that a bubble is round, it's surface tension. Uh, that's not to say that you can only make dots. If you get the formulations just right when you synthesize these, you can make rods and wires and all kinds of shapes. Here you see something that, I know it kind of looks like a boomerang, it's actually got three legs. The, the third leg is just pointed up at the, the microscope. So we can make all kinds of sizes and shapes of basically every semiconductor that exists. Uh, so that's all fine and good, but so what? It turns out their optical properties are absolutely incredible. Now here you see on the left, these are the absorptions, and the small dots have an absorption here in blue where the absorption onset is at a high energy blue wavelength. Now that compares to a, a larger dot which has an absorption onset towards the red and we all know that red photons are lower energy than blue photons. So the large dot has lower energy absorptions and that's all mirrored in the emissions where again the small dot is a blue high energy photon emitter and the large dot emits red. And here in this photograph this has not been doctored up in any way. This is what these materials really look like, except for, actually, this is kind of interesting. They look better in person than they do you know, compared to what you're seeing because your monitor cannot correctly express how, how uh, color saturated these things look. They, they have very high color purity and uh, unfortunately your monitor can't mimic that. So they actually look, more, they're actually prettier in real life. Now in terms of what these things are useful for, the QLED TV, go to Best Buy, those are sitting in the back, those are from Samsung, so we're putting these in monitors, I, I believe the Kindle Fire has them, and guess what, the greens, yours truly is one of the developers of the green color in these displays. Now the materials I made, I even have a patent on it, uh, they don't use those anymore, but I did have something to do with this, and if any of you come to office hours, I can tell you the whole story later. You can also do bioimaging with these, and this is another example out of my research lab where you see us uh, staining cancer cells with quantum dots. And the reason that this is useful is that the quantum dots never photo bleach. Dyes photo bleach, they'll photo bleach within minutes, but my quantum dots never do. So you can study biological processes much longer. All right, now, as for how the particle in a, bo a box principle applies, here we have a little, I know it's kind of silly, but this is a, a large quantum dot, and you can see the valence state, which has all the electrons, and this being a big red dot, if a green or, or blue photon comes along, the electron absorbs that, and it goes to a higher energy state, and that absorbs the photon. So I know you had this in freshman chemistry. So when the electron relaxes back to the, the valence state, of course that energy difference results in a red emitting photon. All right, now, particle in the box says that these energy levels depend on the size of the box. So if the box gets smaller, the energy levels will rise. So, so watch this. You see that energy rises as the box gets smaller. So that means that you're going to need a higher energy blue photon to cause that electron to get excited to that higher state. And of course, when the electron relaxes, you're not going to get a, a red photon. Of course, you have to get a higher energy blue photon. So that's how these materials work. Now I want to show you one other thing that's kind of interesting, how we synthesize these. So me and my postdoc made a video that that's coming up next.